Very good afternoon to all of you, and uh, thanks to Anand and, and his team for putting together this uh, sessions. Uh, thanks, Mr. Shivastav. Uh, I would like to just very briefly touch upon uh, two themes which have resonated uh, in the session so far. One is innovation, and the other one is reliability. Uh, First Solar is a thin film uh, photovoltaic module manufacturer, and uh, our technology is very different uh, from uh, what comes to us from the polysilicon world because we don't use silicon uh, in our modules. Uh, we, uh, in, so ever since the late 80s, people have been researching to use alternate materials, uh, alternate semiconductors to uh, alternate silicon basically to exhibit the same electrical characteristics which is light falls on, uh, on the material and it, it uh, produces electrons. We uh, as a company uh, started research with uh, cadmium telluride uh, which is a binary mixture of cadmium and tellurium. Uh, and uh, we produced our first module way back in the mid-90s. Uh, company went commercial uh, in, uh, in the late part of 90s. We had a very successful IPO, and, and today we have about 3 gigawatts a year of annual production, uh, part of it in the US, part of it in China. Uh, sorry, part of it in Malaysia. We don't have uh, any production in, in China. Uh, for a variety of reasons, uh, most, most importantly for IP uh, issues and because the technology is highly patented. Uh, the innovation uh, 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 comes to us because the manufacturing process is extremely different. We use glass as the primary material, coat it with a very thin layer of semiconductor. Uh, it, there's a lot less of material which is used uh, for the same watts uh, as compared to silicon. And then we cover the module with the second piece of glass uh, to give it mechanical stability, seal it, and the module is uh, done. Uh, there have been, um, so the manufacturing process is very different. It does not have any of the upstream uh, processes around silicon refining, wafer, uh, cell manufacturing, and, and so it's very fast, but it's also a continuous process, right? Uh, the, the, the positives of this is that all our modules are alike, so there is no grade one, grade two, different bill of materials. It all comes from the same source. So if we have a problem, it manifests itself across the fleet, uh, but then there is a lot of consistency uh, in the way uh, technology is produced. And this holds good for other thin film uh, uh, technologies too. The, uh, there have been a lot of misconceptions around thin films. Uh, which we keep getting uh, from uh, from our customers, especially people who are not familiar with our technology. The most common ones are it's inefficient, uh, it's toxic, and it's less reliable. Um, the fact is that, yes, when ThinFilm started, uh, ThinFilms are essentially second-generation photovoltaics. And so when it started off in, let's say, the early part of uh, 2000s, uh, the, the production cost was lower as compared to poly simply because the processes are different, but the yields, the efficiencies were also lower, the conversion efficiencies. Uh, first solar, just as an example, uh, we've invested over a billion dollars of R&D into improving the efficiency of our technology. And today, uh, our commercial product, which is available across a three gigawatt uh, volume, is just under 17% uh, conversion efficiency, right? Uh, so in terms of area uh, per, per acre on a ground mount, you know, you can install thin films today at the same, uh, uh, you know, acres per megawatt as you would do for polysilicon. But then we also believe that conversion efficiency is really not very relevant when you look at cost of energy. You need to look at real world operating performance uh, and that comes from how the semiconductor behaves when it's subject to variations in temperature, variations in the quality of light, uh, variations in the angle of incidence uh, of the light, because all these efficiencies which manufacturers like us and others on the panel publish are at standard test conditions. And what's important is when you deviate from standard test conditions, what happens to that efficiency? And the reason why innovation happened in PV and people went for uh, you know, second generation materials is because these materials have a slightly more robust characteristic where in terms of degradation when they're exposed to high temperatures. Also, they respond relatively better to polysilicon uh, when they are exposed to low quality light. And these are things which are proven 
And so what happens is as solar deployment happens between the two tropics, where it's very hot, where it's very humid, and the light quality is not that good, uh, you would see thin film technologies, whether cadmium telluride in our case, or CIS, which is uh, the other thin film um, technology which is popularly available, produce more energy for the same installed capacity as compared to silicon, especially in hot climates or hot and humid climates. And that's what innovation does in terms of innovating on the primary semiconductor material. Um, just as a point of reference, we've improved our conversion efficiency at about 3x uh, that of polysilicon in the last four years, right? Polysilicon cell record cell, we're talking record cell to record cell efficiencies as, uh, as published by NREL. <coughs> Those of you who are interested could go to the NREL chart and see how the efficiency curve has progressed for monosilicon, polysilicon, and thin films, and, and uh, you know, you would see the, the rate of growth is a lot more uh, in thin films, uh, simply because there's been a lot more innovation happening on the primary material side. Um, toxicity is the other thing which we keep getting. Uh, we use, uh, and because we use a cadmium, there's a name called cadmium telluride, and cadmium, as all of us know, is toxic, but cadmium telluride uh, is a binary material uh, and it is not cadmium. It's, it's as different as hydrogen and oxygen and water, the analogy. So when you fuse hydrogen and oxygen, you get water, uh, which is stable, uh, non-flammable, whereas elementary hydrogen is extremely volatile. Similarly, elementary cadmium is very different from cadmium telluride. Plus, we use a lot less material. We just use 12 grams of semiconductor cadmium telluride in a module which weighs 12 kilos. And so even if you crush the module, break it, there's no way you would get cadmium out in the atmosphere. We've got tons and tons of uh, research paper, including one done by IIT Delhi, which uh, demonstrates that these are uh, environmentally safe. Uh, and, and kind of the proof of the pudding is that we've got installations in Japan, in the EU, in the US, and all these countries have fairly more stringent EHS uh, safety regulations as compared to the current uh, safety regulations which we have in India. Moving topics to reliability, uh, very favorite topic for us. Uh, Rahul spoke about, uh, you know, the uh, accelerated testing of, uh, of, some of, of PV modules. Uh, since our, techno our manufacturing is continuous, we have the, and, and you know, as, as I said, all our modules are alike. We have the ability to pull modules off from production line at a random and cycle them through these tests, these accelerated life cycle tests uh, which we've been doing for the past about six, seven years now, right? Um, IEC, and we all agree, is not the ideal measure because it's a one-time test and there is no connection between what you produce and certify at IEC versus, versus what you produce in, re in, in real world operating conditions. And, uh, you know, as an organization, we take reliability very seriously. So we've uh, worked with uh, companies like TUV uh, they have these long-term sequential tests, stretcher tests. These are protocols which are far more stringent than the become the bare minimum IEC requirement. Uh, and then we also worked with the SGS uh, for and, and defined what's called Atlas 25, where you take all these tests which Rahul talked about and operate the module for a year. And the same module is cycled through uh, these harsher environment uh, environmental conditions in an accelerated environment for a year and it has to hold uh, to the levels of degradation which uh, the manufacturer warranties. Uh, because I think in the end, it's not so much about the efficiency, but it's about real world operating parameters and also about long-term reliability. And uh, you know, I mean, uh, we're proud to share with the audience here that IIT Bombay and NREL did a study in India. Uh, they sampled uh, PV modules installed in India over a period of five years, starting from 2010 to now, across multiple technologies. And uh, cadmium telluride actually got the least degradation uh, in that list. The study is available in public domain for those of you who want to go in and research it. But again, I think long-term reliability is where developers would lose or make money. And so it's very important that uh, reliability standards are properly ensured in, ensured in not just the spe specs, but also the regulations, uh, right? And I think MNRE has taken the first baby step 
of at least coming out with an equivalent IA standard. But really, uh, the next step would be to have random sampling in Indian laboratories and then have Indian laboratories certify and test modules which are meant for installation in India. That would really set the bar for uh, people to stop dumping um, you know, obsolete uh, technology. Lastly, I would like to just comment on what Chetan shared, said about uh, you know, developers uh, uh, losing money because of technology. But it's the developers who select the technology, sir, at the end of the day. So if you are you know, not sure about where to invest your money and you don't do the diligence, then you know, developers should not blame somebody else at the end of the day, right? You know, warranties have to be enforced properly. You need to have contract mechanisms which allow you to do that. And, uh, you know, I mean, so uh, it's, it's, uh, it's fine, but then, you know, nobody's forcing developers to uh, go and buy uh, uh, low cost or low quality equipment, right? If they're knowingly buying it, then there's something wrong with the whole process. With that said, I'll uh, give it back to Mr. Shivastav, open for any questions later on. Thank you.